We hear a lot about the word sin. What does that word actually mean? What does it mean that humans are sinful? I think most of us would recognize that the world is not the way it's supposed to be, right? There's wars, there's violence, there's hunger, there's poverty. We really don't have a problem with that. But we're also not the way we're supposed to be. That reality is what the Bible calls sin. This sense that we also are broken, not just other people or not just the world out there is broken. That we are actually, if you want to put it this way, captive to a power that keeps us from becoming the people we were meant to be. See, a lot of times when we talk about sin, we think, oh, sins are these like bad things that we do, these, these, these small things, oh, I could have done that a little bit better. But, but the Bible's picture is actually far deeper and richer than that. Um, there are tens of words in uh, the Old Testament scriptures alone that talk about sin, uh, that are often translated sin. Um, one of those words, usually the, the, the most uh, common one, actually talks about sin as missing the mark or falling short of a goal. Uh, I think that's a, a really helpful picture. Another word, kind of the second most common word for sin uh, in the Hebrew scriptures, is, is this idea of being bent or twisted. Right? The picture of sin is that there is a way it's supposed to be and that we don't get there. It's either bent or twisted or we fall short of that goal. And it's not just that there's some exterior law, that there's some, some arbitrary set of rules that we've fallen short of. The picture we have from Genesis is that we are meant to be in perfect loving relationship with God. That there's a trust relationship where, where, yes, God shows us because he made us what it means to live the fullness of life. But in rejecting that fullness of life, we're actually rejecting him fundamentally. And so sin is a relational rejection. It is a, it is a saying no, not only to uh, some law or some rule, but actually saying no to God himself. And as a result of that saying no, everything else in life starts to fall apart. The wars, the hunger, the poverty, all those different things start to fall apart. This means that sin is a power that actually resides in us. And it's something that every human being has. We've inherited it from our, from our spiritual fathers and mothers. None of us are immune to this. Often this phrase, original sin, um, gets used to describe this. Um, but it's also true that there's no part of us that is free from this power. Every single part of us has, has been infected, if you want to put it that way. Um, there's nowhere to run. There's nowhere to hide. This is something all of us experience. Now, there may be certain areas of our lives where we may wrestle or, 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 or struggle with a sin more than someone else. But this power of sin, this inheritance of sin is something that's true of all of us. And what it creates then is this actually radical equality. We're all on the same page. There's no good people and bad people. There's no righteous and unrighteous in and of themselves. We're all on the same page of having this problem of sin, being infected with this power of sin that, that, that really actually enslaves us is the way the scriptures talk about it a lot of different times. And if that sounds pessimistic, right? if that sounds like extremely bad news, it is bad news, but it's actually not pessimistic. It's actually wildly optimistic because unless we can say that we are not the way we're supposed to be, we're saying that what we're experiencing right now is as good as it gets, that, that this is all there is. When in reality, what God purposed for us and what he is redeeming us and rescuing us and restoring us into is something so wildly beyond what we currently experience. We need a word for how far beyond us that is. Right? That's what sin is fundamentally saying. That we were meant to be so much more and that God 
in his love and care for us is actually going to bring us to that fullness as we trust in him.